Chapter 13 of Danger in Deep Space. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Danger in Deep Space by Kerry Rockwell. Narrated by Sam Holloway. Chapter 13 Roger flipped off the teleceiver. He stared at the darkened screen and began estimating the chances of success for a plan he had in mind. Deciding that, regardless of what happened, he had to take over the ship, he got up and turned toward the hatch and the gun locker. He stopped cold. Loring stood framed in the doorway, a Paralo ray gun in each hand. Just stand right where you are, space boy, snapped Loring. You want ten minutes, huh? Ten minutes for what? I thought there was something funny going on when we missed the Polaris with that bomb. You knew all along that I didn't have anything to do with that crash back on the station, didn't you? shouted Roger. His eyes blazed angrily. Yeah, so what? growled Loring. Hey, Mason! he yelled over his shoulder. Get up here in a hurry. we got to work fast. What are you going to do? asked Roger. You're still valuable to us, Manning, said Loring with a crooked grin. You're going to ensure our getting what we came after. Mason stepped through the door. Yeah, Loring. Loring quickly told him of Roger's attempt to work with Connell. Take our space boy down below and lock him in a storage compartment. He handed over one of the Paralo ray guns, and Mason shoved the muzzle into Roger's stomach. Get moving, Manning. He snarled. I'd like nothing better than to let you have it right now. Roger smiled, knowing Mason still harboured a grudge for the beating he had taken early on the trip. When you have him locked up, get back on the control deck, said Loring. We're going to do some old-fashioned bargaining with Blastoff Connell. Bargaining? exclaimed Roger. Yeah, one slightly used space cadet for what we came after, the copper satellite. Connell won't bargain, said Roger. Not for me, not for anything. You don't know him. I know this Manning, said Loring. I'm going to get on the teleceiver and tell Connell that if he doesn't blast away from here right now, you're a dead space cadet. He jerked his head toward the door. All right, take him below and tell Shinny to stand by on the power deck. In case Connell won't bargain, we'll have to make a run for it. Right, said Mason, as he shoved the Paralo ray gun deeper into Roger's stomach. Move, Manning. Roger climbed down the ladder and through the long passageway of the Space Devil. He passed Shinny on the way down. What's going on here? demanded Shinny, seeing Mason with the Perello ray gun. We missed with the bomb, said Mason. And Connell Ray's ship. He's ready to blast us if we don't surrender right away. Loring's trying to make a deal with him. What kind of a deal? asked Shinny. Hot shot Manning for the satellite. He hasn't told you everything, Mr. Shinny, said Roger in his casual drawl. They're the ones who caused the crash of the Annie Jones and the deaths of Jardine and Bangs. They framed me. Then, mused Shinny. You're cleared? Yeah ground mason he's cleared cleared for a long swim in space if connell doesn't do what loring tells him get in there mason shoved roger into the cramped storage compartment he locked the door and turned to shinny loring wants you to stand by the power deck in case connell won't play ball we might have to make a run for it yeah yeah said shinny i'll stand by the power deck mason turned and walked away shinny followed him a curious gleam in his eyes up on the control deck, Loring was twisting the dials in front of the teleceiver screen. Space Devil to Polaris. Space Devil to Polaris. Come in, Polaris. He twisted another dial and watched the darkened screen anxiously. After a moment, the screen blurred, and Tom's face gradually came into sharp focus. Loring! gasped Tom. Where's Roger? Never mind him, you punk! snarled Loring. Tell that fat-headed Connell I want to talk to him. Make it fast. Tom's face disappeared, to be replaced by the raging features of Major Connell. You murdering space rat! He roared. I've given you two minutes to surrender. And by the craters of Luna, you've only got thirty seconds left. It'll only take ten seconds to tell you that if you don't get out of here, Cadet Manning gets blasted. What? Roared Connell. That's right, snarled Loring. You're the one that's got 30 seconds to get out of here, or Manning takes a swim in space. Who are you? Connell's face was twisted with rage. You can't threaten me. I ain't threatening you, said Loring. I'm telling you. If you don't get started, you'll never see Manning again. But if you do, you won't recognise him. Now make up your mind, Connell. The Solar Guard officer hesitated. 
Give me two minutes, he said, and I'll call you back. Two minutes. Two minutes, repeated Loring. And if I don't hear from you by then, or if you try any funny stuff, Manning gets it. Aboard the Polaris, the screen darkened, and Connell, his fists clenched, turned to Tom. We're helpless, Tom, he said softly. Now that we have proof of Roger's innocence, I have to do everything in my power to save him. Tom didn't say anything. Suddenly Connell smashed one huge fist into another. But by the blessed rings of Saturn, when I do get my hands on that lowering, I'll... I'll... He broke off suddenly and turned back to the teleceiver. I'm going to do what he wants, Tom. Roger's life is worth a dozen like lowering, and we'll have to take a chance that lowering will keep his word. After all, continued the big officer softly, our mission is complete. We've tested the transmitter and found it to be more than we expected. No real reason why we should stay around here any longer. Yes, yes, sir, stammered Tom. Uh, sir, I... I... Connell waved him silent with his hand. You don't need to say anything, Tom. It's just one of those things. Still, I can't help wondering what they came out here for. He turned to the dials on the teleceiver and began twisting them. I'll call him. And you stand by to blast out of here. Nicholas Shinney sat on the power deck and listened to Loring issue orders over the intercom. I don't know if Connell will go for it or not, said Loring. But just in case he doesn't, we've got to get out of here fast. You got that, Shinney? Yeah, answered Shinney. I got it. Mason! yelled Loring. You take over on the radar bridge. Already up here, said Mason. We'll be sure we've got a clear trajectory out. Better take us into the sun, Alpha Centauri. That way, maybe they'll miss us on their radar. The sun will show all sorts of blips on their screen. Okay, said Mason. Do you think he'll go for it? I don't know, answered Loring. But if he doesn't, it's going to be space dust for Manning. Shinny got up and walked around the deserted power deck. His legs felt weak. The plan he had made was a desperate one. Over and over, he checked the operation in his mind. It would have to be quick, sure, and sudden. That was the only thing that would ensure success. Yes, sir, he thought. If we can surprise him. We can get away with it. He dug out a piece of chewing tobacco, took a bite, eyed the remaining piece, and then shoved the whole thing in his mouth. His cheek bulged. He went to the intercom and flipped it on. Hey, Loring, he yelled. I've got to check the timer on number three rocket. She's not acting just right. It'll take me about a minute. OK, came Loring's reply. But make it snappy. The timers were to the left of the control board, but Shinny turned to the right and the ladder leading to the lower deck... He eased the hatch open, glanced around, and then climbed down quickly. He stopped at a locker, opened the doors quietly, and took out two Paralo ray guns and two rifles. Then, closing the doors, he made his way to the opposite side of the ship. Hey, Manning, he whispered through the closed storeroom hatch. Can you hear me? Who is it? asked Roger. Me, Shinny, hissed the wizened spaceman. He opened the hatch and Roger quickly stepped out. What's the idea? gasped Roger when Shinny shoved a rifle and pistol into his hands. I ain't got time to explain now, said Shinny. We've got to hurry if we're going to take over this tub. Roger's eyes glowed. You mean... Never mind what I mean, said Shinny. Just listen. Loring's on the control deck and Mason's on the radar bridge. Loring's just talked to Connell. He's trying to make him blast out of here. If Connell doesn't, Loring's going to dump you in space. Yeah, I know. That murdering space crawler, snarled Roger. He gripped the rifle tightly. I'll blast him. Now, wait a minute. It's Shinny. You go up and get Loring, see? Make it look like you got out by yourself. If you can handle him, OK. I'll stay in back, and if anything goes wrong, I'll back you up. Fine, said Roger. He patted the spaceman on the back and smiled. Don't worry, Mr Shinny. Nothing will go wrong. Watch your step. That Loring is a smart cookie. Roger turned into the passageway and made his way silently to the control deck hatch. He peered around the edge of the hatch and saw Loring sitting in front of the teleceiver screen, his back toward Roger. The cadet quickly stepped into the control room, levelled the rifle and said quietly, All right, Loring, keep your hands in view. Loring spun around and stared open-mouthed at Roger. Man! He gasped. Yeah, me, said Roger. Call Mason and tell him to come down here on the double. But one wrong move, Loring, and I'll give you a quick freeze with this ray gun. Moving slowly, Loring turned to the intercom and flipped the switch. Hey, Mason, he yelled. Come down here a minute, will you? What do you want? 
growled Mason. I've got to figure out this course. Roger stepped close to Loring, raising the gun. Loring licked his lips and turned back to the intercom. Don't give me any back talk, I said. Get down here. Suddenly the teleceiver came to life. Polaris to Space Devil. Come in, Loring. This is Major Connell on the Polaris calling Loring of the Space Devil. The suddenness of the voice startled Roger, and for a split second he took his eyes off Loring. In that instance, Loring leaped for the boy, grabbing at the rifle. The quickness of his lunge caught Roger off guard, and he was thrown back against the bulkhead, but he held on to the rifle as Loring tried to twist it out of his grasp. What the? cried Mason from the ladder leading to the radar bridge. When he saw Roger and Loring struggling, he grabbed for the Paralo ray gun at his side. Just at that moment, Shinny stepped through the hatch and fired his rifle. Mason was frozen into a rigid statue, unable to move. All right, Loring, yelled Shinny. Step back or I'll blast you like I did Mason. Roger wrenched the rifle out of Loring's grasp and stepped back. Good work, Mr Shinny, he said to the little spaceman. You sure figured it right. Attention, attention. This is Connell on the Polaris. Come in, Loring. Shinny looked over at Roger and winked. Better answer him while I get this joker locked up. He motioned to Loring, who stood backed up against the bonquet, his hands high over his head. You dirty double-crossing space rat, he snarled at Shinny. No, no, none of that, said Shinny, levelling the rifle. If you get too noisy, I'll freeze you like I did Mason to keep your trap shut. Loring cast a sidelong glance at Mason, who stood as if carved out of marble. The effects of the ray blast were devastating, having paralysed his entire nervous system. While the victim was still able to breathe and his heartbeat remained normal, he was unable to move so much as an eyelid. The gun was developed after all lethal weapons had been outlawed by the Solar Alliance. Though any victim could be released from its paralysing effect by a neutralising charge from the same gun, while under its power the victim was reduced to a state of mild hysteria. He was able to hear, see and think, but not to act. When released it was not unusual to see a man crumple to the floor from exhaustion. Loring marched meekly in front of Shinny to the storage room that had held Roger. The cadet spaceman remained on the control deck. He twisted the dials of the teleceiver and spoke into the mic. Space Devil to Major Connell. Come in. This is Manning on the Space Devil calling Major Connell. Manning! shouted Connell. I thought you were a prisoner. Ah, it was nothing, Skipper, said Roger blandly. I just took over the ship. With a little help, of course. A little help? asked Connell. From whom? Roger then gave the officer a complete review of what had happened to him since leaving the space station finishing with Shinny's aid in his escape. Why would he want to help you? asked Connell. I don't know, sir, replied Roger. Well, never mind, said Connell. I suppose you two can handle that ship all right between you. Land on Tara as soon as you can. I'll get the details then. Aye, aye, sir, replied Roger. Then, just before breaking contact, he yelled into the mic. Hey, Astro, Tom, see you in a few minutes. As the teleceiver screen darkened, Shinny reappeared. He had released Mason from the effects of the ray charge, and both Mason and Loring were safe in the storage room. He walked over and slapped Roger on the back. Well, it looks like we did it, sonny boy, he said. Roger turned to look at the wizened spaceman, who was still chewing on the plug of tobacco. What made you do this for me, Mr Shinny? asked Roger quietly. Tell you a little secret, said Shinny, with a merry twinkle in his eyes. I was in the Solar Guard for twenty years. Enlisted man. Got into an accident and hurt my leg, but it wasn't in the line of duty, so I was tossed out without a pension. Ever since then I've been kind of bitter, you might say, and strangely enough it was Major Connell that kicked me out. But you... you... gasped Roger. Let's just say... said Shinny with a smile. That once you're a solar guardsman, you're always a guardsman. Now how about getting this wagon down to Tara? Yeah, yeah, sure, said Roger absently, his eyes trailing after the small limping figure. Once a solar guardsman, always a guardsman, he thought. Smiling, he turned to the control board. He felt the same way. He was a guardsman, and it was good to be back home. End of chapter 13